Father, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, you are my strength and you are my redeemer. This is your host, Monica Martin Fletcher, and I want to thank you and welcome you. Welcome, guys, to another episode of Monica Mentors. I really had to take a deep breath before we started our episodes this month. You know, sometimes you always hear the old folks used to say, your trying times are your best times. And this is that month for me. I went into this originally wanting to release um, a conversation to our teens, specifically our girls, but guess what? Guys are facing abuse as well. And as I went through the episode and explored some things and talked about and shared some things in our last episode, I realized that the conversation needed to go a lot deeper. And one of the things that I wanted to promise you guys were we were always going to get to a place where we could talk about those things, especially as church kids that seem to be mm, complicated to the church. And so the declaration, the prayer that I did at the beginning of this episode was a lot of what I had to do to even prepare myself for this episode. You know, as a lot of you guys know, huh, when we get into church, y'all, it's hard to talk about complicated stuff. It's hard because how many of us really truly believe in that saying that um, some might even call a cliche when we say if you've had a test, you have a testimony. But how many of us, if we go to those deep, dark things that we had to deal with as a test, this show is going to make you understand and wonder if you are really ready to be healed from it yourself and to heal our kids from it as well. All right, y'all, let's jump right in. This is another episode. Tonight, we're going to be talking about pain to peace. That's the episode title. And then we're going to be guiding Christian teams through abuses, silent shadows. You know those things, those shadows. Y'all, I cannot continue to stress this enough. There are things that our church kids are dealing with, mom, dad, aunts, uncles, that they're not talking to you about. Youth leaders, there are things that our kids are dealing with that they're not talking to you about. And so what we're going to do is we're going to tap in. We're going to, I'm going to invite you to join me for this powerful conversation aimed at you, mom and dad, aimed at you, aunts, uncles, grandparents, church leaders, minister leaders, those who are possibly still in the church, on the fence about church, may have left the church yourself because of these same things. We're going to talk about it in this episode. We're going to explore those unspoken issues of teen abuse. I'm going to offer some faith-based guidance and some practical tips. <laughs> Y'all, that's one of the things that was my little bit of pet peeve when I first decided to embark on this journey. And as we came up and I got the suggestion about using Monica mentors, that was a little hard for me at first because a lot of times some of us you know, that test versus that testimony. Y'all, sometimes some of us live it to know it all. And it can sometimes hinder people from wanting to reach out to you. You remember on the last episode, I talked about those safe spaces. And in the next couple of episodes, I'm going to talk about those safe spaces as well. Because I think sometimes we become just pinched too judgmental to understand that healing starts with a safe space. All right, so we're going to transform pain into peace today, y'all. And we're going to help our young people. We're going to navigate those silent shadows with strength and resilience. So I want you to share your thoughts, share your pains, but I want you to share your victories as well. Um, again, test, testimony, good times, bad times, Every witness doesn't have to be something 
uh, as it pertains only to all your brokenness. I want to hear your good things too. Mom and dad, this may be an opportunity for you to possibly share something with your teens that they may not have known about you before you became mom and dad. That person that you dated, mom probably told you wasn't a good person, but you dated them anyway. Um, dad, that woman who possibly wasn't a good match, but you did it anyway. And some of you guys, just like me, have found yourselves in an abusive relationship and just didn't quite know how to talk about it. But none of that. We're ripping down the walls. That's the whole purpose of this show. We're going to rip down those walls for church kids so that we can be healed. We can be whole. We can be non-judgmental. We can be non-judgmental. <laughs> and we can help our kids live and not die to proclaim the goodness of the Lord. All right, y'all, let's jump in. Y'all, listen, I had to get some notes together on this one. I told y'all this one was a little complicated for me. Woo. All right, so listen, I, I wanted to give some biblical perspectives on abuse. Now, did I find anything where the Bible specifically gave a definition about relational abuse? Um, not really. I found some context where it talks about um, abuse as it relates to marriage, abuse as it relates to uh, back in the old days, they talked about, you know, uh, biblical perspectives if you were a virgin. So there were a lot of different things that it talked about. But what I found was there was a scripture in John's, oh, excuse me, James 3 and 9. And this was from the New International Version. And what it says was, with the tongue, we praise the Lord and our Father, but with it, human beings, we curse people who were created in God's image. And so what my takeaway was from that, okay, God says, there's this little song I remember we used to sing when I was in church. Jesus loves all the little children, all the little children of the world, red and yellow, black and white. They are precious in his sight. Jesus loved the little children of the world. But then in that same context, if somebody makes us mad or somebody makes us angry, the same tongue we just say is Jesus love everybody. And the very next time we cuss people out, you know, you might say something nasty about somebody or gossip about someone. And so that was the context that I found about abuse. Like, how is it that God tells us he loves all of us? And in the next tongue, we are forgetting that that person who we're standing in front of was made in his own image, just like you were made in his own image. And so I think that's a key factor to remember. If we all were made in God's image, then you don't have the right to put your hands on someone. Nobody has the right to put their hands on you. And that abuse can be verbal or physical. So not only hands, but there are certain ways that we should be mindful of how we speak to people when we're in relationship with them, especially in a dating relationship. And so teens, one of the things that I'd like you guys to capture from this particular text is if you have someone, oh, I know, I used to tell this joke. I used to say, listen, my dad's pet peeve was he was going to always, I don't care, y'all, I'm 50 years old. If I go home and my daddy sees that either my car is dirty or, you know, my tire, my rim. I remember one time I went home, my rim wasn't on there. My dad was like, where's your keys? And he would put that dog on rim on my car. And so you have to get to a safe space where if you're in, if you're dating someone or friends with someone or getting ready to start a, a relationship with someone, and if they are treating you in a way that's contrary, especially if you have parents who are treating you in a positive way, then don't be attracted to someone that does just the opposite. I have a friend that used to say, to this day, she says, well, my dad used to do all this for me, so why was I attracted to someone that does just the opposite? That's a question you may want to explore with your parents because our parents are there to to uh, form us and, and groom us up in the image that God created us, like it talked about in James 3 and 9. So what happened that you feel it's okay to let someone treat you differently? Now, if you're in a situation where, you know, maybe parents are in a tough situation themselves, or you're seeing things at home or you're hearing things at home, then I would invite you to seek help 
Pray, seek help, seek a counselor, seek an adult that you could trust. Because sometimes I don't think we realize just how much power the tongue has. And the tongue is where it starts, mom and dad, in an abusive relationship. Doesn't start out physical. It typically starts out with words. And then it goes to actions. And then it goes to isolation. And so that's the first tip, mom and dad. Maybe practice some twos with your kids. Listen, sit them down and say, look, your dad don't put his hands on you. Don't you let no little boy. Your mama don't put your hands on. Don't you let no little girl. And nowadays, from what I'm hearing from a lot of people I know, that situation is not just male to female. It's female to female, male to male. So the most important part is, is to sit down and have these conversations with a trusted adult teens. And mom and dad, youth leaders, prayer leaders, let the kids have a safe space to be able to have these conversations with you. Okay. So that text again for your reference was James 3 and 9. And then another one I found that I really liked was Colossians 3 and 8. And again, that was Colossians 3 and 8. And it says, but now you must also rid yourself of such things such as anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Now, listen, we have a running joke with some of my friends. I have cussing friends, okay? I'm a church kid, but I have cussing friends. <laughs> and the running joke between my friends used to always be, don't curse my uncle. I mean, you don't even sound right. Like, just let us do it. You don't, you don't even sound right. And then a lot of times if I found myself getting angry or feeling malice with someone, they'll be like, stop. You, you, I can tell you you're raised in church because you don't even know how to get mad right. You know, but <laughs> a lot of that, I think, comes from the way I was raised and the things that my mom and my dad did teach me about being mindful of anger and malice and unforgiveness. And so what I found out from the person who was abusive towards me, he did have a lot of anger. He was angry with his dad. He was angry with his job. He, he had started to uh, have a lot of malice towards the way his mom was treating his siblings versus how he was being treated. And so I don't think anyone ever set him down and helped him understand the healthy and the unhealthy sides of anger. I think he only embraced the the unhealthy side. Because guess what, y'all? Let, let me stop right there. You're going to get mad. You're going to get angry. There's going to be something. This is not a world where you're going to walk around and see butterflies and trees all day long. Life be life in. And so there are going to be times that you're going to get angry, you're going to get mad, but you got to practice how to channel that anger so that if you do get in a relationship with someone, that anger won't come out at that other person physically um, or even verbally. Don't think just because they are speaking to you a certain way don't mean that they may not necessarily put their hands on you in a certain way. It just happens sometimes. And so learn how to temper your anger. But be careful because if you operate in unhealthy anger too long, then that turns into rage. And the first image that pops in my mind when I think about rage is like something sets, it, it sets on fire and is uncontrollable. And so that also messes with your mental state as well. And that puts you in a mindset where you're pretty much open to whatever, you know, it's like, you'll just pop off. You know, one of the things, um, someone I know close used to say, my anger, my rage, and my language, people better be glad I do that because that keep me from hitting people in the face. No, that's not healthy because guess what? What if you run into you? I tell people that all the time. Have you ever thought about if you run into you? Like what if you run into someone because you know, you're dealing with certain things and you're handling things a certain way. What does that look like if you run into somebody that's doing the exact same thing that you do? Y'all just going to kill each other and die? Like <laughs> you, you gotta, you gotta be able to get to a space where you can understand that's not healthy behavior. And once you get into that space, you got to realize you got to deal with it. Cause guess what? A lot of us are dealing with mental behaviors that are tending to creep up a little bit more as we're coming up on the holiday season in the next couple of months. 
And so that's just some food for thought. And then my favorite one, y'all, Psalms 1, it says, Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers. So what that means to me is, listen, if you see someone and they're showing signs of being a little bit too protective and a little bit too, what you doing? Why you change password? Why can't get you on the phone? I call you 10 times. You didn't answer. You got to be real careful because you might be walking in a company of mockers. And what that means is... You, that's okay. What, babe? Oh, we forgot, didn't we? Hey, I just made it. I love that. Okay. You love, love that. Okay, I love that. Really love that. Okay, and then y'all also, um, another two scriptures I want to give, and you can go check those out later. Um, Ephesians 4 and 32 says, please be kind and compassionate to one another. Again, if you feel like you're in a situation where you are the abuser, I don't, don't get in a relationship. Go go take boxing classes. Go get some counseling. Um, most abusers, in my opinion, they tend to dominate people who they consider less than. So go find you a giant. Get that, get that stuff out. Your, now, I don't want you to have it at all, but I'm very realistic to know people have to heal when they are ready to heal. Just like the one who is being abused. You have to heal when you're ready to heal. You have to take a look at what made you step into that situation in the first place. And I believe Ephesians 4 and 32 and Mark 11 and 25 that talks about prayer and forgiveness. I believe those are some key pivotal steps that can help you as you kind of walk out of either the process of being abused, walk out of the process of being the abuser, or guess what? Never walking into an abusive situation at all. Because one thing I can tell you, when you recognize the signs of abuse and you learn how to identify the emotional and the physical abuse in yourself and in a person, especially sometimes what you even see on social media, your life will look totally different as a person because then I feel like you can use what's called your spiritual discernment. Now, most church kids, if you have not heard of that term, spiritual discernment. My basic definition is a lot of people call it an unction. A lot of people call it a hunch. A lot of people say, man, this ain't, this deja vu. All those things I've always called spiritual discernment. That's something that's in you that's saying, don't do that. This is not good. Maybe you should look at this situation again. Maybe that's not the right person. And so pay attention to those triggers that's another word I've heard people use for spiritual discernment. And nine times out of 10, the body, the mind, the spirit, man, it is giving you a sign. Don't do it. Pray for them. Keep it moving. Pray. Keep it moving. But don't get in that doggone relationship. Okay. So mom, dad, some of the things that you can identify if your teens are possibly being abused in person, verbally, physical, or on social media, because there's a lot of dating going on on social media, you start to see their behavior change. If they only want to be with that certain person all the time, if um, they're used to going out with their friends, let's say they're a cheerleader or a football player, and they are pulling away from what they love, their hobbies, their grades start to drop. That could be potentially a warning sign for you, parents. If they are, you start to see unexplained injuries, you know, all the time. If they're constantly saying, oh, I stepped on something, I bumped my foot, I was doing this. Pay attention to that. Unexplained injuries are probably, my opinion, because I've been in that situation, that's one of the first things I think you should kind of pay attention to if they start to dress differently you notice they were in shorts and you know tank tops and all of a sudden you see them in long jeans and the arms covered up they're putting on a lot of jewelry uh, pay attention to that mom and dad pay attention to that youth leaders that is a potential sign that there has been some abuse um 
They avoid discussing that relationship that they're in. Now, come on now. Y'all know every new relationship we get in, we want to shout it to the world. This is my boo. This is my baby. You know, this is my girl. This is my dude, you know. But if they don't want to tell you anything about that person, they don't talk to their friends. They don't, you know, because come on, teens, we don't really talk to our parents, but we going to talk to our homeboy and our homegirl about somebody we're dating. But if they tend to avoid the conversation, friends, that could potentially be a sign that there may be some abuse. And another trigger to that is if they're always making excuses, always apologizing for the person that they're dating. You know, oh, well, they wanted to be here, but they couldn't. And they're doing it all the time. Because one thing about an abuser, they tend to want their victims to be in isolation. So they don't want to come around because they don't want you to see them. They don't want you to identify there may be something going on. They don't, you know, they might not want you to see their mannerisms towards, you know, your son or your daughter. And so they may stay away on purpose. And then the the person who's being abused will make constant excuses why they're, you know, why they're not being there. So that's something. Friends, pay attention to that as well. I know I'm talking to mom and dads, but friends, when they come over for sleepovers, y'all going to the mall, y'all shopping, um, definitely pay attention to that. And then they are constantly <laughs> telling the person that they're dating where they are. Mom and dad, y'all on a family trip and they saying, oh, wait a minute, let me go call, you know, let me go call John and tell him where I am. Let me go call Jennifer. But they're constantly doing like y'all at the dinner table. They're trying to text and tell them where they are. Y'all on the ski slopes. Y'all, you know, going to, to you know, the, the amusement park. Y'all hiking. And they're constantly want to tell that person where they are. That's another sign. And then they are constantly I think I mentioned that already. They're constantly changing their passwords and their forms of communication. Mom and dad, that's a biggie, by the way. So one of the things that you want to make sure you do, you want to create safe spaces for your children. So if you're at home, you want to make sure that you're offering your kids open communication. Here's the key one. you got to be non-judgmental in your listening and for your response. So don't just listen to respond. You got to listen to everything they're saying so you know how to respond. And then pray. Say a prayer while you're listening to them. God, give me the wisdom to respond to my child, to respond to my niece, to respond to my nephew. Lord, let the words of their mouth and meditation of their heart be acceptable so I can hear what they're trying to say. Y'all better listen. When I'm, when I'm in a complicated situation, I will pull somebody to Bible to check me in a heartbeat. And so let's make sure that that conversation is very non-judgmental. You need education. Educate your sons and daughters about what it means boundaries. Nobody should have some little boy or some little girl hanging around them all the time. Y'all ain't married. Y'all ain't dating. This middle school, this elementary school, this high school, this college, okay? They ain't paying no bills. If they around you, it, it them children around your children more than you and your husband or you and your significant other, y'all, that's a problem. Teach your kids how to establish boundaries. Now, if you're in a church space, you also need to create safe spaces for children to be able to talk. That's one thing we do where I serve in children's ministry. We always make sure that the kids have a safe space, but we give them the same disclaimer. If somebody need to tell your mom and I or your dad, I'm going to tell them. But we give them the space to be able to come in and talk to us and trust us that we're going to give them words of wisdom and not just fuss or holler or start screaming at them or, you know, being disrespectful to them because you're going to lose the kids every time. Then churches start a support group. Okay. There are kids in the church who are being abused. There, there you go. It is. Y'all don't like it, but it is. You need to start some support groups. You need to do some awareness programs in your church. You guys need to partner. There are programs in all of your states. Google them. Find out what's going on. Look them up. Bing them. Whatever you want to do. Look them up. Join those groups. Child sex trafficking is humongous. And church kids, unfortunately, have been pulled into those channels as well. You need to find those groups and listen to them and talk to them and find out what you need to do to support the kids. Now, at school, there needs to be some anonymous reporting. There are so many kids who are being abused in the school and the parents will never know it and the church will never know it. But you see it at school. 
friends. You see your, your other friends at school being abused. Schools, you need to be able to have a support system for them to be able to report it anonymously. You need trusted counselors. My guidance counselors, especially when I was in high schools, they were gangster. They would pull you over in a heartbeat. What you doing? What you got going on? You need to talk to me. We need to get that support system back in the schools again. And in the schools, you need educational programs. You need to be able to talk about abuse and love and, and, and how to date and, and just being in relationship with the opposite sex in general. Because unfortunately, everyone at home doesn't know how to have that conversation. Y'all, we are way past birds and bees. <laughs> we got to start having some trusted conversations about this. And then I want you, I want to give you a couple of tips on how to practical tips, teens, on how you can protect yourselves if you are experiencing abuse. First thing, know that no one has a right to put their hands on you under any circumstances whatsoever, especially in a violent way. Nobody. Okay. Nobody, period. Church kids, nobody has a right to put their hands on you in a violent way. Second thing, verbal or physical abuse is not love. That's one of the things I can remember. It, it used to make me sick to my stomach because when I was in that relationship, he was constantly telling me how much he loved me. Constantly. But that's even, but that's a form of abuse because an abuser wants you to feel like they're the only person. Nobody else can do anything for you. They're the only person that understands. They're the only person that's going to be there for you. And so that's what I want you to understand, teens. Violence or physical abuse is not love. Okay. Remember, love is patient. It's kind. It's not envious. It's not boastful. That's, those are some things that love are, but it's not, it's not violent it's not manipulative. It's not creating a space of isolation to pull you away from all your friends and your family and the things that you love. Third thing, I want you to find a trusted adult that you can talk to, whether if you can't talk to someone at home, you know, everybody got a favorite teacher. I mean, I guess. I feel like at church, it, it, all of us, our kids come pull us in a heartbeat. So find you a trusted adult that you can say, listen, I need to talk to you. I need help. Mom and dad, give them that space to be able to do that. And don't get upset if they go to that trusted adult before they come to you. Because if they go to a trusted adult, they will pull you into the conversation. But you need to give that buffer sometimes for the child to be able to just start the conversation and get it off their chest. Now, one of the things that I want to share with you guys, if you are not able to find a confidential adult you can speak to, there is the National Domestic Hotline. And that telephone number is 800-799-7233. Again, that's the National Domestic Violence Hotline at 800-799-7233. All right. And before I close this show out, guys, I want to give you a call to action. I want you to go back and share this video with every young person that you know. I want you to share this with every parent, every aunt, every uncle, every grandparent, great-grandparent, your pastors, your church leaders, your elders, your ministers. I want you to share this with everybody, y'all, because there are church kids who are in this situation, whether they're in relationship with male to female, female to male, male to male, female to female. This situation is out there, guys, and it's getting worse because we don't have not taking the time to create any safe spaces in our churches, our homes, and our community centers for them to be able to approach us. Remember, now is the time for the saints to rise up to possess the kingdom. Now is the time for us to be the head and not the tail, always above and never beneath. But how can we do that if we won't have a conversation about the critical things that our young people are dealing with today? And so my call to action to you is you deserve to be treated with kindness, teenager, college student. You deserve to be treated with tenderness. You deserve to be in a healthy relationship. And if that health, that relationship doesn't feel healthy, then I want you to get out of it. And you need to prioritize your well-being. 
And I want you to say right now, I am ending this abusive relationship right now. Isaiah 41 and 10 tells us, do not fear before God is with us. And so no matter what it feels like today, trust me, God will strengthen you and he will help you and he will uphold you to get out of that situation. All right, y'all, this is another episode of Monica Mentors. Let me know what you think about the show. Give me some feedback. I want you to share this. I want you to like it. I want you to just let this flow all over every social media channel that you have. Let's get this conversation started. Let's get this topic moving internationally. Let's get this going on college campuses. And more importantly, just remember, you, no one has the right to put their hands on you in a violent way. All right, y'all be blessed. I'll talk to you next time.